Hello everyone. We're back here at RU. Are you in my living room? And we're going to have a little third talk today. And we're going to be talking about the fear of the Lord. And so before we begin, let's have a word of prayer and ask God's blessing on our message tonight. Father in heaven, I pray that you'd be with us, that you would touch our hearts and lives, that you would uh, instill upon us the fear of the Lord, help us to recognize what it means, what it doesn't mean. And may we just uh, live in your presence continually. And Father, I pray you touch our hearts and that you would move in our lives. Uh, be with me, give me the words to say, and I thank you for all that you're going to do and all that you've done. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I hope that you have with you your little workbook of Never Less I Live and that you will turn to page 77 on uh, this is for April 17th, 2020. So uh, keep that in mind. Keep uh, on page 77. We're going to be dealing with letter F, the fear of the Lord. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on the screen right now. You can uh, copy and fill in each and every one of those little blanks. I think there's three. And uh, once you do that, uh, if you need to, you can pause uh, and then uh, make sure that you unpause so that we can continue the video. All right. Okay, so now you've seen that uh, the fear of the Lord pleases God and, and that uh, if we examine what the fear of the Lord is and define it not only through the definition that's given to us in our books, but also in an expanded definition so that we can have a better appreciation of all that it does. So uh, the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. So our uh, subject uh, overall is pleasing the Lord, and we're going to be looking at how uh, the fear of the Lord helps us to please the Lord, because God taketh pleasure in them that fear him. And so as we uh, explore this definition, uh, it's defined as a respect uh, for what God can do, what God would do, and what God should do. And that is a fine definition as far as it goes. But let's expand on that and think about it in, a, in an even broader sense. Uh, fear is a, not only a honor and a respect and a reverence for God, but it is also uh, an awareness of God, no matter where you are and no matter what you're doing, no matter who you're with, no matter if you're all alone or, or with a group, it doesn't matter. The presence and practicing the presence of God is so important in our Christian lives. We have to have that awareness that God is here, God is present, and he's with us. And so as we uh, look at this uh, definition and understand it, uh, about this, uh, this awareness, we also have to understand that fear is also fear. Uh, uh, fear is an emotion. Fear is something that uh, we uh, don't have any real control over sometimes and uh, that we uh, have to uh, recognize there are times we're going to be afraid. It's like any emotion sometimes, uh, even with the emotion of love and even the emotion of anger, there are both negative and positive aspects to that emotion. And in the same way, uh, with the emotion fear, there are some things that are clearly uh, wrong and there are other things that are clearly right as far as the Bible is concerned about fear. You know, it's interesting that uh, Jesus told us that, uh, that fear is uh, uh, both in the same sentence. He said that uh, fear is something that we should have and uh, something that we should have not. Uh, uh, Jesus says in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 28, and fear not them which kill the body. So God tells us there are some things that we should not have a fear about. Fear not. 
he said. Not only in this scripture, but many times in the New Testament, Jesus says, fear not. But, but are un, not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's found in Matthew 10, 28. And so we understand that there's times when we should fear and there's times that we should not fear. And so as we understand that and as we uh, uh, recognize that there's times where we need to have godly fear and then there's times where we have godless fear and i want us to talk a little bit about the differences between those two things so uh first of all godly fear is always limited by the bible the bible limits our fear the bible tells us these are the things that you should fear there is a limited number of things that we need to fear and it's not only limited by the bible but it's limited limited by the guidance of the holy spirit in our lives so uh godly fear is always limited a godless fear is unlimited and uh and out of control of the holy spirit and so now we're, uh, if we let uh, fear, uh, godless fear take control of us, we become afraid of everything. We become afraid of uh, the uh, ants of the earth, uh, the bugs, the insects, snakes. Uh, the number of phobias there are, are, are un, uh, uh, undescribable. So we need to realize that when uh, we have godless fear, it's out of control. It's limitless and that it can uh, consume us. Secondly, godly fear is always moving us forward while godless fear paralyzes us and holds us back from doing the things that God wants us to do. So if you have a fear if, and you can uh, judge whether or not that's a godless fear or a godly fear by is it moving you forward in your work of the Lord? Is it moving you forward in your relationship to God? Is it uh, doing resulting in more of the word of God in your life? More of the Holy Spirit in your life? More of your service to God in your life? Are you, uh, are you ready to expand? Are you ready to go beyond your comfort level? To, uh, to reach this world with the message of the gospel. And so as we understand that godly fear uh, pushes us forward, godless fear paralyzes us and keeps us from doing the things that God wants us to do. Some people do not have a ministry. They do not have a way to uh, express themselves in the local New Testament Bible church. And we need to realize that if we do not have a ministry, we're not doing all that God wants us to do. And so we need to be looking for that ministry, not afraid to, to fail, not afraid to uh, explore uh, avenues beyond our comfort level and just move forward in the work of the Lord. So godly fear is also concerned outwardly, as we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Uh, as we, uh, if we have godly fear, our concerns are outward. We're worried about or concerned about whether or not God is pleased with us. What does God think of my life? What does God think of me doing that? Uh, you know, uh, we need to understand that when we are looking outward, we're also thinking about our friends and our relatives and, and those we love in our lives and, and, and how is our influence affecting them? How are we uh, doing things that are, are going to encourage them to live for God? And so our uh, emphasis is outward with godly fear, but with godless fear, our emphasis is always inward. How will this affect me? Uh, what, what will happen to me if I do that? And so one of the ways that we can judge whether or not our fears are right and cor correct and proper is by looking at what is the concern there. And then finally, number four, godly fear results in hope. That's what our verse said. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that, he, that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. And so uh, hope is a result of the fear of the Lord. If you ever think about that, that, that as we fear him, and as we seek him, and as we are aware of his presence, we have hope. Now, hope is not this kind of a hope. Oh, I hope so. No, hope is an anticipation. Hope is, a, is an expectation. 
uh, it's desiring and knowing that there's something good at the end of that tunnel. There's something good at the end of our efforts. And so it's an anticipation and an expectation that God is going to do something wonderful. And so godless fear, though, results in hopelessness and depression. And godless fear uh, 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 has uh, such a constricting uh, level on our life that we cannot have any real hope, any real expectation that God is going to do what he has promised that he would do. And so it's important that we understand the difference between godless fear and godly fear. Secondly, I want us to talk about what we should fear. There's things that God wants us to fear. And in, uh, in, in my own life, in a personal way, I just want you to know that uh, some of the things that I think of when I think of my fear is I fear disappointing my Heavenly Father. You know, uh, uh, He has done so much for me. He has done uh, so in so many wonderful, miraculous ways in my life that uh, I need to understand that I, I just don't want to disappoint him. I don't want him to be disappointed in my life. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 12, chapter 12 and verse 24, Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider how great things he hath done for you. 1 Samuel 12, 24. And so we need to recognize God has done things in our life that we could never do. And on the, by our love and appreciation for him, we should fear to disappoint him. Secondly, we fear missing out on God's opportunity. We need to be a clean vessel. Now, last week, Richard uh, talked about uh, being concerned and worried about what's going on and he made this statement and I had to back up the video and listen to it several times and write it down carefully because it was so good but he said this when you are too concerned and worried about what's going on around you you will miss an opportunity to serve the Savior Wow you'll miss out on an opportunity for lasting reward in both your life and in the life of others by being too concerned and worried about what's going on around you. Uh, that's not only true, but also in our lives, if we're not fearing God, if we're not uh, practicing the presence of God, then we're going to be uh, uh, unable to take advantage of the opportunities that God uh, has for us because we won't be a clean vessel. We won't, uh, we probably be concerned and worried about the things going on around us. And so we need to practice uh, the fear of the God, of God in our lives. And so uh, when you're not fellowshipping with God, you will miss opportunities. And then number three, what you should fear you should fear, you should fear not hearing those words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You should fear the judgment seat of Christ. You should fear uh, not uh, being able to uh, come before God and uh, with a clear conscience and uh, a life that you're uh, glad that you were able to serve the Lord with. We should fear that. Acts 20, 24, the Apostle Paul talked about finishing his course with joy. And we should not only want to start out right, we should not only want to have a great middle of our lives, but we should also finish our course with joy. And so we need to be uh, understanding that one day each one of us will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Very clear in scriptures. And so we need to recognize that and be afraid. 
Be afraid to disappoint the Savior. Be afraid to miss out on God's opportunities. Be afraid of not hearing those words well done and, 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 and that uh, standing before the judgment seat of Christ and, and see that everything we did in this life was wood, hay, or stubble, or gold, silver, and precious stones. And so it's important that we understand that uh, we should fear uh, the judgment seat of Christ in the sense that we fear uh, to not hear those words well done and then I want to talk about just for a moment of some things that uh, we should not fear we should not fear number one the condemnation of God I'm talking about uh, uh, fearing the fact that we are going to miss out on heaven and end up in hell and the truth of it is is that if you're afraid that you're going to go to hell it may be that God is trying to get a hold of your heart and trying to direct you into a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ so you have to determine in your heart and I'll tell you how that you can help to determine that in just a minute but you have to determine whether or not you there was a time in your life where you recognized that you were on your way to hell and that you with your whole heart said dear Lord I know that I'm a sinner save me now you may not have used those exact words you may not have said it in that way but you had to recognize that you are a sinner and recognize that Christ has saved your soul and if that has occurred in your life then you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven not based on your goodness or your behavior it's based upon your faith and that you trusted in Christ as your Savior and that he saved your soul the Bible tells us that uh, God is very clear that uh, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and so we can have an internal witness an internal witness to our salvation and that the spirit of God witnesses to our spirit and tells us that we are saved and so we can have that assurance from God we should not fear the condemnation of God you should not fear the death of the body we also talked about that a little while ago uh, Jesus said to fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell Matthew 10 28 and so we have uh, this promise of God that we can rest upon and thank God for and so uh, not only that the third thing we should never fear we should never fear the will of God for our lives do not fear the will of God don't ever uh, make a statement or think in your heart that oh I'm afraid to let go and let God have my life no uh, we should never fear the will of God God is not going to make you miserable God is not going to destroy your life God is not going to give you a horrible life you will have joy unspeakable and full of glory when you surrender your life to God and so anything that tells you different than that is not from God but is from our enemy Satan and so you need to recognize that God wants the best for your life God uh, desires the very best and that uh, your uh, best interest is God's will for your life your best interest the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end and so God wants the very best for your life never fear the will of God for your life and then I just have to share a couple of other fears that we should not have because these are personal to me uh, I, I really I don't fear uh, whether or not I'm going to heaven I know I'm going to heaven God has given me that assurance time and time again and I'm thankful for that and I really don't fear dying I, I tell you what I've faced death I've seen the uh, the, the, the report that, uh, 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 that said cancer malignant and 
And uh, that report was an ugly thing, but the peace of God filled my soul because I knew where I was going uh, and I do not fear death. Doesn't mean I'm ready to take the trip today, but I'm just saying I don't fear uh, th that I'm going to die one day. I know that and I, I rejoice in it because the Bible does tell us in Ephesians 2, 7 that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And so I know God uh, is going to uh, just do a wonderful, marvelous thing. It's a hope. It's an anticipation in my life. And I don't feel that fear the will of God. God's will, I am convinced, is the best thing that I could ever have in my life. What I do fear and I deal with on a regular basis is I fear deal with the fear of man. I mean, I've gone off soul winning uh, hundreds of times, door knocking, uh, out Royal Oak, and uh, passing out tracts, and just uh, giving out the gospel. And every single time, I have to admit that I get the, the butterflies, I get the jitters, I get uh, worried. Uh, the fear of man has to be uh, dealt with. But I want you to understand that you can deal with that biblically. You know, the Bible gives us a tool, the Word of God itself. It gives, it, it, the Bible gives us itself as a tool for us to push past our own self, our own self-doubts, our own problems and, and feelings. And so we have the scripture that teaches us that uh, I can do all things through Christ. Uh, be strong and of good courage. And, and we can let those phrases of the Bible flow through us to be able to push through those times of uh, worry or concern or uh, jitters, whatever you want to call it, to be able to do the work of the Lord. And, and so uh, I do deal with that, I, I want you to know. But I also uh, am highly uh, sensitive to the criticism of others. Uh, I wave beyond what I should be. And I, and I know it's a, a fault and I deal with it and I pray about it and I ask God's forgiveness and, and he's helping me with it. But, but uh, it's just something that I think we should be aware of that uh, everybody that you know is dealing with something. And if they're not, then they might as well just walk on water because uh, they're, they're perfect. But all of us need to recognize that there are some things that we need to deal with. These are two that I deal with regularly. And I hope that what I've said about those things uh, will, uh, as we focus not on ourselves, and as we focus on the fear of the Lord, and as we focus on God's approval, and God's pleasing, whether we're pleasing God, uh, as we focus on those things, we'll get over it, we'll get past it, and we'll be able to serve God better. Uh, I want to, uh, uh, this, uh, I've got a few more minutes yet. I want to talk to you for a minute or two about something that Bob Drohan said to our, our youth thread. The men in our youth uh, have a little uh, text messaging thread in which we encourage one another. And Bob Drohan, you know who you are. Uh, sent this uh, 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 portion of a book that he was reading by a pastor by the name of Raymond Ortland Jr. And he said this about the fear of the Lord. It can be extremely painful to learn the fear of the Lord. It is death to our narcissistic egos and self-assured opinions and superior neutrality. I love this wording. But we do not change for the better by turning inward. We change as we turn outward and upward to the Lord, as we talked about uh, earlier in our, our message. We turn up, outward and upward to the Lord and with an awakened sense of his sheer reality, his moral beauty, and his eternal grandeur, infinitely above us, but relevant to us. And so uh, as he continues on, he says this, if we are ever going to learn anything about the fear of the Lord, we must forsake the fool within, named self. And it is not brought about by straining and willpower, but by a long, deep process of unselfing. No other way. Wise people humbly revere God 
and lovingly live to please him. The fear of the Lord is a willingness to turn from evil and change. That's what the fear of God is all about. And so uh, as we understand the principles that are brought to us, as we understand the lost state of men as uh, there's no fear of God before their eyes, Romans 3.18, and we understand that for the Christian, the fear of of the Lord, men depart from evil. I pray that we will have that desire and that uh, wisdom in our life to always, every moment of the day, practice the presence of God and the fear of the Lord. Thank you.